bedeviled our nation for decades. The financial burden of cancer has added to the physical and emotional burden of this disease, forcing many families to seek diagnostic and treatment services outside of Kenya. This integrated molecular imaging center is the first, as we have heard, of its kind in a public hospital in Kenya, but also the first of its kind in the Eastern African region. This facility is part of the Kenyatta University Referral Hospital Comprehensive Cancer Care Center, and it contains world-class equipment that will help transform our national and regional response to the unyielding threat of cancer. We as a country and as a government are making these investments in recognition of the fact that cancer today is the third leading cause of death in Kenya. And projections show that the burden of this disease will grow by approximately 85% by the year 2030 unless we as a government take bold steps to address the challenges related to this disease. Key amongst cancer challenges is early diagnosis and accurate stage grouping, that is to say stage one, stage two, three or four, and with this local facility, patients will no longer have to travel abroad to get accurate cancer diagnosis and quality cancer care. I wish to assure all Kenyans that the doctors, the specialists we have here, the equipment and services are now at par or better than those found in the countries that historically Kenya, Kenyans were traveling to for diagnosis and treatment. Today we have heard that there are already patients who have undergone, undergone diagnosis here at the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center. And I'm glad to note the impact of this intervention in their livelihood. So today we know that outward medical tourism, especially for cancer care, results in Kenyans spending approximately 10 million shillings every year abroad on early and accurate diagnosis and subsequent quality treatment. Additionally, and of great concern to me, is the fact that not every Kenyan citizen can afford to seek services in hospitals outside Kenya, meaning that those with cancer often have late diagnosis and treatment. When cancer diagnosis is delayed or inaccessible, there is not only a chance of survival, but also increased complications in treatment, leading to increased cost of care. So early diagnosis, as we have heard, is therefore an integral part of improving cancer care management. As a government, we have invested a lot in health, equipping health facilities, training healthcare workers such as nurses and doctors, as well as other healthcare professionals. In addition, we have also invested in the construction of additional public health facilities and also undertaken the reform of the National Health Insurance Fund. All these efforts are to ensure that Kenyans access quality and affordable health care here at home. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The government has launched several initiatives specifically addressing cancer care. In July of 2020, we launched the new cancer control strategy and additionally, the Ministry of Health has also proposed a nationwide lifestyle modification campaign to fortify this intervention. We also rolled out the breast health awareness campaign, which aims to improve access to breast cancer care in our country. In Kenya, breast cancer is the most diagnosed cancer and has annual incidences of 6,000 new cases and 2,500 related deaths every year. In response to this and working closely with county governments, we have also established 10 fully functional county level chemotherapy centers ensuring that treatment is available in several counties and these include amongst others Mombasa, Kisumu, Kakamega, Garissa, Nyeri, Nakuru and Meru. We have also developed and disseminated the national cancer screening guidelines to all counties and we continue to encourage screening and provide annual cervical cancer screening services and we urge all eligible women to take advantage of the healthcare facilities which include maternity and nursing homes, level four facilities such as the sub-county hospitals, county referral hospitals and level six facilities. My administration continues to make remarkable progress in addressing affordability of healthcare services through, as I said, the repurposing of NHIF. Under this framework, NHIF will cover diagnostic tests at the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center here at KU Hospital. And as I said earlier, these are the tests that Kenyans seek when they travel out of the country. And in fact, the National Hospital Insurance Fund has a series of comprehensive oncology packages that will eliminate the need to travel outside Kenya for cancer care. As an example, as we heard earlier, 6,451 cancer patients benefited from the NHIF oncology package in the financial year 2019-2020. So today I once again urge all Kenyans to secure their health care by registering with NHIF. This medical cover will increase access to healthcare services at affordable rates. The NHIF cover already caters for cancer treatment, including radiotherapy, chemotherapy, brachytherapy, which is an internal radiotherapy treatment that specifically targets tumors in the body, which is also now available here at this referral hospital. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are not only officially opening the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center, but also the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center Hospitality and Accommodation Center, having the support, as we all know, of one's loved ones, is also key in the success in conquering cancer. This hospitality and accommodation center will ensure that families can stay close to their loved ones receiving treatment here, while also providing accommodation for outpatients from far afield as they await subsequent rounds of treatment, eliminating the need for long back and forth journeys that levy a heavy toll on their health and also their recovery. So I want to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, by commending all those who have worked diligently 
over the past one year to make this day a reality. I take the opportunity to thank the hospital's board of directors, the hospital management, all the contractors, the equipment suppliers, GE and all of them, and all members of staff for their tireless efforts. And I also laud the KU Referral Hospital for the immense contribution to our administration's commitment to the transformation of our health delivery systems. This contribution is appointed to the level of excellence that we should expect from all our public hospitals across the country. As I close, let me say that as a country, we will keep our focus on the reduction of cancer cases, while at the same time enhancing survivorship rates. I therefore look forward to seeing the continued growth of Kenyatta University Teaching, Referral and Research Hospital. We have agreed that we will be here in January for the Cyber Night. Good as well as other healthcare institutions across our country. And we urge them all to continue meeting our objective of ensuring that Kenyans have the best possible healthcare at the most affordable price. With these few remarks, it is now my distinct honor and privilege to declare the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center and the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center Hospitality and Accommodation Center officially open. Mungwa Bariki, Mungwa Endele Kui Bariki Ichi Ya Kenya, and to Endele Kufanya Kazi, Wakelele Wa Endele Makolo. Yes, and actually it's now official, the Integrated Molecular uh, Institution, one of its kind. Uh, it's a center that will provide not only hope but also diagnosis and treatment of cancer. Uh, the head of state uh, has talked about it, uh, but uh, let's first of all hear the national anthem. Your Excellency, we all remain studying as His Excellency the President leaves at this point. That is uh, the first event uh, in the President's Today Diary where he has officially uh, actually opened the first public uh, institution of its kind, not only in Kenya but also in the region, uh, that is uh, at the Kenyatta University uh, Teaching, Research and Referral Hospital. And uh, perhaps to recap on what the Head of State has talked about is that the, he expects that the cost of uh, healthcare will be coming down. Many patients have had late diagnosis which only uh, can only uh, complicate matters in terms of the treatment and in terms of the cost and also this center is bound to help a lot of Kenyans who seek treatment outside the country bringing the cost of treatment right here in Kenya which will be far much uh, easier and less costly. Uh, of course uh, the center will enable Kenyans to access more uh, a variety because talking about uh, the breast cancer, he has given some, some startling statistics, talking about 6,000 new cases each and every year and 2,500 related deaths when it comes to breast cancer. And this is one of the centers that will be able to help uh, Kenyans uh, access uh, the treatment and the diagnosis that they so much deserve. He has talked about the government working uh, together, hand in hand with the county government to, to establish that 10 functional chemotherapy centers in some of the counties 
counties like of course Nairobi we have some here in Nairobi we have uh, he has mentioned Mombasa Kisumu uh, Garissa uh, just to mention but a few including uh, Meru and uh, he has talked about the NHIF the revamp of the NHIF which we also be able to cater for uh, the diagnosis and the treatment at this facility but the clarion call the head of state has made to Kenyans uh, is that we should all all of us uh, try and ensure that we uh, register and, and uh, of course the, the payments of the NHIF to ensure uh, that our health is guaranteed remember health affordable health care is one of the pillars of the big four agenda that is the first event there is another event as you can see behind me today is KDF day which has been marked since October the 2012 uh, when Kenya entered uh, Somalia to deal with the Al-Shabaab insurgent that had uh, threatened to uh, polarize uh, the security of the region and the country as well. You do remember uh, Linda, Operation Linda Nchi after invoking Article 51 of the UN Charter. Let's celebrate these uh, men and women in uniform. And we also have another crew there uh, where we will be getting uh, a feel of how the day will be and of course this all the two events are happening at Kahawa so from uh, KU uh, you just cross over to the Kahawa barracks and we will be bringing you up-to-date coverage on the same uh, when the president uh, actually gets uh, there so as I've said today is KDF day remember them we do salute them for all the efforts that they do and the sacrifices that they made I'm Ben Troyenjoy I will be back when the president uh, hits the ground at uh, the Kahawa Barracks to commemorate the KDF Day. Thank you for watching. As we celebrate this year's Mashuja Day, your national broadcaster KBC has prepared a special lineup of programs to make this occasion memorable. Our sister station Shoro FM will have a roadshow on 18th and 19th October with our caravan visiting various towns in Kirinyaga County. Come meet your favorite radio presenters as you enjoy entertaining live performances on Tuesday, 19th October. Catch 7 p.m. Darubini and 9 p.m. Prime Edition live on location from Kirinyaga County featuring several heroes and heroines of our time. On 20th October, get comprehensive coverage of the Mashujadi celebrations from Wanguru Stadium live on KBC Channel 1 and our radio stations. Keep it KBC for exciting shows and comprehensive news week. Hers was the face I saw above my cradle, the only mother I've ever known. But my feet are set upon a road that I must follow. I will teach thee. Man shall be ruled by law, not by the will of other men. These are mine. My people go. I know not his God, neither will I let his people go. You have not obeyed the Lord. This night, the Lord our God will deliver us from the bondage of Egypt. The Vulturine guinea fowl, an animal that has the head of a vulture, the colors of the most brilliant of species, and the tail of a peacock. What I love most about the birds is their behavior, their calls, how the males attract the females. It's very fascinating. We are still studying the reason why anybody in the group can initiate movement and all the rest will follow. This is Wildlife Warriors, and I'm Paula Kahongi.
speaking fluently comes easily for most of us. However, it can be a challenge to some. Stammering is a speech disorder. It means the speech is not in order. When did you discover you had a problem with your speech? At the age of four, mm. because my fellow kids were thinking so, mm. so fluent. What needs to be addressed like he's, he's talking about? Giving information to the teachers. Most teachers have no idea mm. that this is a case of stammering. So if they are made aware, they will be handled differently. mkulima tutaangazia ukuzi wa uyoga uh, mushroom ziko na advantages mingi na pia kulingana na vile uh, uh, the health wise when you come kwa watu wamekuwa used to nyama sana na imekuwa inadhuru watu wengi sana kisha tutafute mbegu ya aloe vera katika maabara hapa hivi ni kuhakikisha kwamba kazi yote ambayo unayofanya pale ni ni mahali pasafi Usikose kujiunga nasi Jumapili saa na nusu hapa KBC Channel 1. Hey, when you die.